today's episode of the IG Life session, Single Summit IG Life session. So we thank God for another opportunity to be here. We thank God for the last two um, editions of the post Single Summit IG Life. And today again we are here. My name is Fola as you know, and I'm here with my friend and my sister. <laughs> Good yes. to be here, Fola. Yeah, good to have you here always. Mm -hmm. And we thank God for the last um, edition with James and Janet and Pastor Lide. It was a time of great blessing. I mean, I was blessed. So, say, how was it for you? Uh, last week, uh, Pastor Lide came for yeah. the first time um, for IG Life. And I think one major thing that stood out for me was when he was talking about the emphasis of the leading of the Spirit mm. and how the Bible, like the Word of God, plays a major role in us getting um, our leading's you know, mm -hmm. right, because I think the question that, that flamed that uh, session was because somebody was asking um, the leading of the spirit, how do I get, because I feel like some young people, they are scared to make decisions based on their because they feel mm -hmm. like, what if I make yes. a wrong, a, a wrong mm -hmm. uh, decision, yes. and in, their, in, in quotes, the Lord led me, and at yes. the end of the day, it turned out that it was not really the, the Lord. Lord, so yes. I think Pastor um, like they just taught us that through the word, when we, you know, soak ourselves with the word, mm. as we grow, we're able to, you know, make right. Yeah, it becomes decisions. more clear yeah, what the leading of the yes. Lord is on the matter. I think what resonated with me was when um, Pastor mentioned how that, you know, not being competitive, but being diligent. Mm. So you can't say that, oh, because I'm a Christian, I'm going to be, um, you know, Later. mediocre mm. about my work yeah. or my, my work, yes, okay. basically, your academics, your work as a career person, because you're supposed to bring your Christianity, your, your Christian values, mm -hmm. the cross life mm -hmm. into even your career. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, he said that it will even make you, you know, put in more quality to your yes, work. Yes. yes. So um, today, because, you know, we've um, had like a lot of, you know, we've, we've lost a lot of time. So we'll just dive right into well, it. Today we have, that, oh, okay. Before we introduce our special guest, okay. I want all our audience uh, to put in the comment section yes. what ministered to you last week. What stood out for you? We want to see it, we want to read it, we want to be blessed as well so that yes. we bless other people. Yes. So, so we are looking out for your comments, so please drop your comments in the comment section. Um, so today we have a special guest. <laughs> Should we do drum rolls? Okay. <laughs> drum rolls. We have a very special guest with us. I'm sure you people know Andy, that today is going to be hot. like very odd, <laughs> you know, given the situation. Andy. Yes. So we have Pastor Ayo Omosen here with us. AKA Pastor AY. Pastor, Pastor Ayo, <laughs> it's good to have you very, here. Very, very good to have you, sir. Thank you very much. Yes. I'm happy to be here. Yes, so you can, you can say hello to our audience. Well, I say hello to all our viewers at home in offices. Everywhere we are streaming from, we are happy to be alive with you and I'm um, yeah. trusting God that today is going to be a time of great blessing. Amen. And uh, I want to also urge you to invite your friends to join yes, us. So. Yeah. Thank you very much. My name is Pastor Ayomoshe. I bring greetings to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Tolu Aloha Moshe. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so shout out to Pastor Tolu yes, Moshe. So. Okay, so... Um, Pastor Ayo is going to be blessing us. Yeah. So I advise you guys to fasten your seatbelt, <laughs> reach out to your friend, and stay connected. Um, so as we knew, as we already know, um, we've been taking questions from the panel session. So questions you dropped, questions your friends dropped, we're going over it again. And Pastor Ayo here is going to be answering some of those questions okay. today. Yeah. Yes, so we'll just go right into right. our questions. Okay, before I even go into the question. I don't know. I, I found out to, um, last week that Pastor Ayo's full name is Ayo Rinde. Oh, wow. <laughs> and if, if what a discovery. Know, what a <laughs> <you laughs> discovery. If wow. you didn't know, mm -hmm. no, no. Because I was thinking, I'm busy Ayo Tunde, busy Ayo Deji. Okay. Oh, which, uh, 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 so we're giving Ayo you guys Rinde. insights now. <laughs> Pastor Ayo Rinde, almost saying. So, yes, so see, you can go right into our question. All right. Um, I'm very excited to have Pastor AY with us today. We've not had him here. And I think I had a conversation with somebody when they saw the DP that, ah, it's Pastor AY that is coming. It's Pastor AY. So they're like, she will not miss this exactly. session for anything. So nobody so should miss it. A lot it. of people are, re are really mm -hmm. excited to have you here today. Thank so I'll so just so delve you. into um, today's question. So the first question with me is, um, let me read it how the writer said it. To take up my cross, Jesus said, I need to deny myself first. Please, what does it mean to deny myself? That's one. And how do I do it? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, I think I have some scriptural references here. <clears throat> Matthew 16. 
Until 16. 16. Matthew 16. Mm -hmm. Just read some scripture, some scripture mm -hmm. to back that up. Mm -hmm. um, verse, not, um, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. From that time forth, Jesus began to shew unto the disciples. How that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer for many, suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him um, and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall be, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me. Satan, thou art an offense unto me, for thou sourest not the things that be of God, but those, those that be of men. Mm -hmm. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. Then Jesus, then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, mm. and whosoever will lose it for my sake shall find it. Mm. For, for what is is it a profit? What is for what is a man's profit profited if he shall gain the whole world mm. and lose his own soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Mm. And for the son of man, for the son of man shall come in the glory of his father with his angel. And then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there will be some standing here who shall not taste there then. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So what I want to say here is that one of the things that about uh, the question said that how can I take my cross? Um, to take up my cross, said Jesus, I need to deny myself first. So what does it mean to deny myself and how do I do it? So number one, we must understand, we must understand what is it that constitutes self. Mm -hmm. What is it that constitutes self? And that brings us to the story of the young, rich young ruler. I can't remember the, the, the exact scripture. Now you can help me look for it. You can. That rich young ruler came to meet Jesus Christ and said, that, Master, I want to follow you. And then Jesus Christ said, He's going to keep all the commandments. And after he has said, that he, has been, he said, They have been keeping that one for a very long, long time. time. So that means even the, the commandment of Moses cannot kill flesh. Mm. So he did that one and then he still escaped what is self. Mm. Jesus Christ did not look, on, look at him. Having he loved him, the Bible said that he loved him. Mm. And he told him, go and sell all you have. Mm -hmm. Then you shall have riches in heaven. Mm. Then you will take up your cross mm. and follow me. So to take to deny yourself is equivalent to selling all you have. So all you have means your physical possession mm -hmm. and your um, both visible mm -hmm. and invisible possession. Mm -hmm. Like there's another place in the book of Mark. Let's let's read Mark eight thirty four. Mark eight thirty four. So I said that self include your title mm -hmm. as a rich young ruler. No matter or whatsoever that is giving you an advantage before men mm -hmm. is part of yourself. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mark um, 834. Okay. Mark 834. Mark 834. Right. Okay, and he said, and he called the people unto him with his disciples. Also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. For whosoever shall lose his life for my sake, for my sake and the gospel's sake, sir, God for gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words. So one of the things that constitute ourselves is what makes us to be ashamed. What casts shame on you? 
That is actually yourself. So the thing that constitutes yourself, as I've said, they are material things. And what makes you to have reputation before men? Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. And those things that make you to rap, have reputation before men, things that men celebrate and are highly exalted, they are the things that Jesus Christ said you must deny. Mm. He said, The grace of God that bringeth salvation have, have appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness. Mm. So there's no way you can deny yourself. Another name for yourself is ungodliness and ungodly life. A life which God does not approve. Mm. So that very life that brings celebration to the soul of man and which make a man to feel important, mm. to feel arrived, and that which make you feel better than your brother. Mm. The ground of competition, the ground of your advantage, the ground of your, of your, of your fame and popularity. What makes you to advance yourself amidst your colleague, amidst the brethren, or in your family? Those are the things they say you should deny. Because by the time the cross is coming, it's going to go after those things. Praise God. So how do you deny yourself? You cannot deny yourself except, number one, grace is supply. And that grace is the giving of knowledge. We saw, now, what is knowledge? This knowledge has to do with revelation of another life. Revelation of another reality. You know, before, um, um, before most of us believers, we have a strong consciousness of men, but we have lost consciousness of God. I think it was Pastor, our daddy, Pastor Mikhail Kuchuku, that was saying yesterday, people, we desire to be with men than to be with God. And that is the reason why self is still intact. But for those who have strong desire to be with God, and leave men. Those are the people that cannot know the hope of denying self. So if you don't have hope, a bigger hope, you won't have any reason to deny self. So number one is to paint a better hope by the giving of knowledge. And that knowledge will not give you reasons why there is a lie beyond here. One of the simplest ways to put it as I round up this, um, this um, particular question is, you know that no matter how much influence, influence you have in the society. No matter how intelligent you are, no matter how good you are with your cause, evil spirit does not have respect for it. Mm. Evil spirit does not have respect for it. So that means there is a life beyond what man approves. Mm. So we would rather look into that realm of the spirit whereby we are much more important than to look at the natural. So to deny yourself is actually to let go of your reputation, to let go of your fame, Take, for instance, let me just put a practical stuff around it. Take, for instance, you, you, have, you, you, are, you are working in an office, and then you have discovered that you have intelligent and brilliant ideas. The Lord can instruct you. This guy that have not get, that have not been able to have promotion for the past five years, can you allow him to lead this team? Give him his, the ideas. Do the other with him and let him take the lead. Let him be the one to take the presentation. So that it can be promoted. Mm -hmm. Now, for you, you pres um, uh, making the presentation before maybe expat expatriate or foreign investors mm -hmm. will grant you a greater edge mm -hmm. in the workplace. But there is, this is a guy, maybe you enter there together, or is your even your senior. Mm -hmm. But because of his disadvantage in the flesh, maybe he's not as bright as you are, you have moved ahead of him. The Lord can instruct you. This person that has not moved for years. Can you help him to move? You have just denied yourself. Wow. That means you sold out what will make you reputable mm. before men. Mm. And then you allow him to go for That is actually carrying cross. Mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, in men, I just give that as an example. Maybe you are in a class, you have people, you are, there is height, there is a height in competition. Mm. You know, you have two guys, you have two guys that are going to make the first class, that can make the list. You, you might end up being the best graduating student of the year. So the Lord can tell you, can you die to that? Can you die to that? That this particular question is coming out in the exam. Show it to him and react together. Wow. Wow. That is cross. And that person might happen to may be a brother or a sister. So you can see that there is a whole ground, there is every reason available around us or every opportunity available around us to really deny ourselves. But what it takes to deny is that you may have a better hope. 
of another reality beyond what you are struggling for here. Wow. So if, Thank if you. the hope is not painted well to us, we will not be able to deny ourselves. You can't deny yourself. If the hope is not well painted to you, you can't deny yourself. Wow. And it just, you know, it just brings my mind back to one of the panel sessions mm-hmm. where um, I think Pastor A.K. mentioned that the worth of the gospel mm-hmm. is not what you're able to gain, mm-hmm. but what you have when you sow it out, that's mm-hmm. how, how much you lose yes, yeah. for the gospel, yeah, that's the worth. Thank you so much, Pastor A.K. That was very powerful. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so we'll be going right on to our next question. Um, so someone is asking, I'll just read as the question was put. Um, I have learned that we lose life every time we sin or disobey. So how does one regain such a loss? Mm, a loss. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. Now, I would rather, <laughs> I would rather put the question like this mm. for, for, from the angle of answering the question. All right, sir. Take, for instance, if I give you baskets mm. to hold, and I am pouring water. Mm. Will I be asking question? How will I regain the water that is lost? Mm-mm. So what is the solution? Place your point the water. Bowl. Get a Give me a bowl that can, yes. that can hold the water. Yes. So the answer, the question is not how can I regain what mm. I lost, but how can I fix wow. the problem with my wow. vessel yes. that is leaking life. Wow. So if you keep on getting life, and at any time you get it. You lose it. Mm. Every time you get it, you lose it. That is almost like you are unprofitable. Mm-hmm. Yes. Praise God. And God is not a waste of resources. Yes. So God is much more interested in repairing the vessel mm. than to keep on pouring water. Mm. No investor. No investor will keep on pouring money into businesses mm-hmm. or into business or into venture that is, mm-hmm. is always uh, that is not uh, yielding. Yes. So the question is that how can I stop losing life? Mm. To gain life is not as much difficult as keeping life. Hmm. So how can we keep wow. life? Wow. Praise God. I don't leave that one yes. answer the question. How can we keep life? So hmm. what are the skills? I, I call it life skill hmm. of keeping life. Hmm. The one thing is to sit down and, um, and pray hmm. and wait in the spirit because there is no straight answer to it because we lose life in hmm. many regards. Hmm. I can tell you that don't do social media. Social media may not be the source of you losing life. Mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. I can tell you don't talk too much. Talking too much may not be the source of losing life. So you have to really pray. Mm. And number one thing is that number one, you must have value for life. Uh, value for life. You lose life because you don't have value for wow. life. Wow. When you have value for life, my mm. brothers and my sisters, mm. you will keep it with everything you have. Yes. So until there is a strong change of value system mm. in our hearts, mm. we can never and never stop losing life. Wow. My sister, if I give you iPhone 15 today, <laughs> the way you will keep it is mm. the way you keep um, um, Nokia 310. Yeah, definitely. You all, if it is uh, maybe one Nokia like that, it's not uh, Palasa. Uh, maybe call it Palasa. Yes, sir. You call it Palasa. Yes, sir. So if they are giving Palasa, it is everywhere. You can even give it to a child. Nobody will steal Play Mario or they play all kinds yes, of games. Uh. But when you have iPhone 15, mm-hmm. that according to now is it worth over 1 million era, mm-hmm. you won't say you just drop it somewhere mm-hmm. somehow. Mm-hmm. And even the person that you know what, for the fact that you know the worth of that phone, mm-hmm. you will keep it very well. Mm-hmm. It's the same way. Mm-hmm. If you know the worth of life, you won't lose it. Mm-hmm. Wow. If you know the worth of life, you won't lose it. If you know what it costs wow. for life to reach you, you won't lose it. Now, the life we are talking about cost God mm. his only begotten son. Mm. That life also cost this only begotten son to go to the cross and die for you. Mm. That, that life that you are receiving now, that was the life we are in, the life of the early apostles were wasted. Mm. They were killed. That life was what made Paul to suffer a lot of losses so that this life can finally transmit to our generation. That life is actually what even cost God to release the Holy Ghost as a person to stay in you. And that life is the reason why they constitute the fivefold ministry. That life is the reason why we have places like Charity Pavilion. That is, that is why we have large auditorium like a, a Redemption Camp. Imagine the investment both in, in giving of um, um, Human resources, and even God's own resources mm. 
to make sure that that life reaches you. So somewhere, somewhere, because the life is is available now, mm. we don't know the value. value. So when you know the value of a thing, mm. you will be careful not to wow. lose it. Mm. So and now, a way to say that, then how can you stop losing life? First and foremost, how did what did I do that make mm. me lost life at a particular point? That you know when you lose life. You know, yeah. I can't. I trace myself to some habits or to some nature in me mm. that is actually causing me to lose life. So those nature, they are the one that you now have to trust God for, for you to overcome, mm. avoid to receive instruction on how to go about it. Take for instance, I discovered that the one time the Lord told me, sorrow, with sorrow you lose life. Mm. You know, at times it's not, you are not even keeping money to anybody. You are not going to, you are only, so you are just sorrowful. Mm. You are just down. Mm. Then being down means losing of life. Wow. So the Lord told me that make sure you don't get into that point again. Mm. Whatever thing that is causing you to be sorrow, sorrowful, mm. make sure you, you kill that thing. Mm. And since that time, I'm conscious. Mm. I fight against being, so I'm talking of myself, not personal dealing. Mm. There are many other ways by which God has dealt with me. But from my own end, I know that one of the ways that the, one of the things that the Lord doesn't want me to have is to be sorrowful. Mm. That means I must learn to rejoice all the times. I must learn to give thanks. Mm. And if you don't give thanks, you lose life. Mm. No matter how genuine your excuses and your reasons are, you lose life. Mm. So and this way of not losing life, they are spread across mm. in the epistle of Paul, mm. epistle of the holy prophet and apostles. If you look at all those instructions, preferring one, preferring one another, he that stole still no more, the works of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit. The works of the flesh are the thing that make you lose life. Mm. The fruit of the spirit are the thing that makes you keep life. Mm. So all of those things, just stick to your Bible. Mm. Stick to the scripture. Read from Romans to, the, to Hebrew, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, Jude, 1 Peter, 2 Peter. Even if you can, you can, you can read it in the book of Revelation. In gathering all those knowledges, you will discover that instructions are there mm. that are that are being put in place to make sure to not to lose life. Mm. And they also show you how to gain life. So you both learn how to keep life mm. and how to amass life mm. to your soul. Mm. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Pastor. <laughs> I mean, from what Pastor has said, the importance of fellowshipping mm. with the word of God, like mm. the actual mm. word of God is very, very, very important. And, you know, um, it also points our mind to valuing yeah, life. Value life. Yes. So, yeah. if you value life, once you see that thing that will make you lose life, you are like, no, not Let's today, go. Satan. Avoid so, like, yes, avoid, avoid me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Avoid like shit. Yes, yes so, me. <laughs> exactly. So, let's see what our, our viewers yeah, are okay. saying. So, yes. guys, I don't know. I'm not seeing some of your comments. I'm not seeing um, mm. what you learned last week. And I'm just mm. seeing, okay, Okay, let me just read the few ones that are just entering. Yeah. Okay, um, Fav, favorite Rita said, God can be trusted. Mm. Um, um, okay, this life is important. Chi Yamaka said that. Um, Faith said, being sorrowful makes me lose life. Wow. So, Pastor, Pastor Aya's instruction has become our yeah. instruction. I think last kids also says, uh, well, also said that I must have value for life. Yes. yes so, very important. You know, and said, his bride, say, Moi, also said, yes. if I know the word of life, mm, I won't lose I life. Won't so, it's good to know that mm, you're following. Yes. yes. It's good to know. Thank you so much. Okay. So, we'll that. come back to you guys. Keep your comments rolling in. Um, we'll just go right into our next question. All right. Moving on. During the conference, the fact that we are to follow and live by the New Testament was emphasized. What are the risks involved for someone who is being raised in a doctrinal setting where the Old Testament rites and rituals are still practiced? Pastor, I know that you understand this question very well. <laughs> <laughs> we can shed more light. Ah, Pastor, is it that we shed it? <laughs> Okay, so, okay, you want to say something? I'm just thinking maybe the person has a background of maybe a Methodist church or something. Mm. Maybe there's a way they do things, rules and regulations set. I don't know if I'm really yeah. explaining the person's question. So maybe the person is now asking. Okay, thank you very much. Number one thing I want to correct is that you cannot practice the Old Testament rights. Mm. 
So I want to ask one question. Is the person or the pastor in charge of your church, is he wearing the robe of the priest? <laughs> is, there, is there outer courts, holy place and most holy place? Is there, are they observing the seven <laughs> feasts of the Lord? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> If the women are doing menstruation, do they come to church oh, or they stay at home? Eh? The, can the woman sit where the men are seated or can they have the same access to the Holy Communion? So we cannot practice the Old Testament rites. Yeah. <laughs> so I want your heart to be at rest. Mm. That I know that a lot of our audience, they are young people. Now for a younger person, for a young person who is still with his parents, mm. I, will, I want you to know that your, your parents' church is not practicing Old Testament. Please, there is no Old Testament right. You can, have they been killing um, um, Bullock every Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> or do you attend church every Saturday? Even when you attend church every Saturday, do you use the, do you use the, the blood of bulls and goats? Mm-hmm. So it's not the Old Testament practice. Mm-hmm. Uh, we must have great regard for the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. We have to have great regard for the body of Christ. The Lord has power with the body in different dimensions. Mm. And uh, wherever we are, under our parents, we must abide by it and submit under them. Let me give you an instance. Jesus Christ, who is the author of the New Testament, submitted himself to the old order. Mm. And from there, he pleased the Lord. So I'm trying to say that it is not the New Testament doctrine. It's not just, it's, um, it's a projection of a life. The essence of every revelation, every understanding that you get is to project a life. So you may even be in the church where doctrines that are new epistle based are being taught. If you are not manifesting life, you may not be different from somebody who is in another church mm. where quote and unquote Old Testament is being practiced. Mm. So what we are after is not the vocabulary of the message, mm. it's the manifestation of life. I want you to know that where you call Old Testament setting nowadays, remember that they also contribute to the emergence of the Christian faith. Mm. Like the Catholic, they were the background of the Christian faith. That was the general church. That, and then out of it, the Protestant church broke, um, broke out. Mm. Anglican Methodist, mm. from Anglican Methodist, some people, they all kept some souls in Anglican Methodist until the next revival will come. Mm. And when the next revival comes, that is Pentecostal, Pentecostal move mm. and charismatic move. The Lord also moved people from there and added them to the new move. And then at the end of the day, we are having the move of the Spirit now called the Word of Righteousness. Mm. And the Lord is adding, so God does not despise any of those places mm. where He has kept His children. Mm. So, number one thing I would say that please don't despise where you are. Mm. Serve your pastor very well. Be obedient, be submissive. Praise God. Mm. Since you have known the Old Testament from the New Testament, if there is anything that is being taught that is not consistent with truth, don't contend with your pastor. Mm. Just avoid it mm. and hold on to the one that is truth. Mm. Don't be controversial in your church. Don't uh, label your church as Old Testament. There is no church that is Old Testament. If they are saying in Jesus' name, that is a New Testament church. Yes, Praise mm. God. Mm. Because in no regard is any church better than the other church. Mm. So why uh, I have to approach it like this, I know it may shock some of you hearing it in this dimension, is that we don't want anybody to cause problems for their parents. Mm. We want you to be obedient children. Mm. If they ask you to go to church, go to their church because they are still paying your school fees. Yeah. They still pay your, they still feed you. Yeah. They ask you, you can't pay it, so you have to obey them. <laughs> and then if I told you there is a reason why you have reason to live, even having a worker in your church, Go through, go through the normal process. Mm. Respect order. Mm. Respect all those pastors that are there, the leaders that are there. Submit under them mm. and say, ah, Daddy, Mommy, I'm being led to move to another church. Mm. I just come to submit it to you. I want you to help me pray and check it very well. Mm. And just leave it. Let them, mm. once they say you are led by the Spirit, every God-fearing pastor yeah. will definitely pray, but you will be afraid of God. Mm. So what I'm trying to say is that I, I really want to correct the fact that there is no church that is practicing Old Testament mm. practice. Mm. And I can say it again. Let me say it again and again. There is no church that is practicing 100% New Testament. Yes, the force of the New Testament is going to, is, is going to be fully released mm. in the world to come. Wow. So we don't even know the strength of the New Testament wow. until we come to the world to come. So the present system or the present arrangement cannot even capacitate 
the fullness of the testimony of Christ, which is the New Testament. Are we together, everybody? Yes, yes, she understands what I'm yes, saying. Sir. Men who are handling, uh, we believers, we are not perfect, mm. but the testimony is perfect. Mm. So our, we also practice it in imperfection. So I'm, I'm just trying to appeal to you, please, um, um, I understand there is no risk there. The risk is that you, the risk is that when your heart is not right mm. and you violate the law of life, mm. those are the risks that is there. I grew up in Anglican church and I didn't attend any Orthodox church until I moved to New Olivier Church. Mm. And I can tell you that I, I did not miss anything. Mm. Inside Anglican church, I was baptized in the Holy Ghost. Inside Anglican church, there was manifestation of the gift of the Spirit. Inside Anglican church, I prayed for people to be filled with the Holy Ghost. They were filled. Inside Anglican church, we contend with forces of darkness in our town, and we overcame. We shut down a whole town by prayers and by intercession. A whole town, deliver a whole town from idol worshiping. Wow. In Anglican church, so there is no, it is still the heart. Mm. It is the heart. I'm not now saying that where there is obviously error. Mm. Like I, I saw on, on one of the social media and do a pastor asking, the female congregation to remove their clothes and all those stuff. Of course, that is erroneous. Mm-hmm. That is erroneous. I'm not talking of those extremes, mm-hmm. but I'm talking of even churches that might seemingly not even teach what you are exposed to, maybe because they came for single submit, mm-hmm. still go back to that church and submit and do the will of God. And who knows, maybe through you, the Old Testament practice that you seems that if they are practicing, they begin to see um, life. But there's no way they can see life. If your life is contradicting the, the thing that are written in the scripture. And number one thing I want to say finally is that one of the signs that you are living in the New Testament is your love work. Is your love work. New Testament is defined by love work. Meekness. Humility of heart. The ability to condescend to men of low estate. Say, don't mind high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Let me tell you things as I... As I hope I'm not taking much time. Let me give you an instance. When he said condescend to men of low estate, mm. this men of low estate, they are people that practice Judaism. Mm. And they believe that the, some food should not be eaten. Mm. That you must not eat food offered to idols. Mm. Praise God. Yeah. And Paul now said that you do not allow your faith mm. to wreck the conscience of another weak believer. Yeah. That if not eating meat, we save my brother. I will ask him from it. Mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, so we should not mind high things. That, that should be the book of Romans chapter 9. Mm. You should not mind high things. Don't mind high things. Don't hype yourself too much. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are the New Testament order. No, let it reflect in your life. And it's reflecting your ability to even have the humility of to even listen to somebody who seems not to be teaching revelation. You can gain a lot. You can gain a lot. Praise God. Yeah. Under your youth, um, youth pastor, your youth president, your, your pastor, you can gain a lot. If you can gain, if you, if experience of life. Mm. And I want to tell you, really, really, some of these pastors, mm-hmm. they also have experience with God. Yeah. They may not have the vocabulary of uh, maybe the New Testament preaching, the revelation of Paul. They may not have access to it. The way our generation have access to it. But that doesn't mean they don't have work with God. So those their, those, their works mm. can be learned. It can be learned. You can observe. Like when I was getting married, I I had my 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 wedding in um, my wife was from was government, and I was when I saw the man that they asked us to come and see one man of God. When I saw the man, I my heart was broken. I knew what that Baba was doing. I can't do it. For that first for that for the first time, I see marriage in another direction. The woman has lost, has partial paralysis. So even when she was talking, she was not talking well. Mm-hmm. But I saw the way this man was loving the wife. Mm-hmm. I was moved. And mommy, and they are here. Mommy, do you want to sit down? Mommy, have you eaten? Mommy, have you... The way he was honoring the wife. Mm-hmm. And it was not because we are there. Mm-hmm. He practically washed this woman's clothes. Mm-hmm. What else can I do? I, that is no testament. Wow. Praise God for such a man has... A great world before God. Mm. And you can see, we say, yeah, they are, the, I'm so sure that, that Baba may not have access to revelation the way we have revelation. But I saw life. Nice. So realized I said, Lord, help me to, I want this thing to be part of my family. Mm. That in health, 
and in uh, what in, in sickness, I will still stick to my wife. I hope we are. I hope you understand the. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Pastor Ay. I mean, I've been mean, blessed is an understatement. So thank you so much, and it just you know brings my mind to the scripture of being all things to all men. To all men. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. So, yes, yes, sir. so thank yes, sir. you so much. Um, I know you guys are still here with us. We'll be back shortly. We want to go on a very short break, so stay tuned and see you when we're back. The cross is a sign of the intervention of God to cross out our way of life. You know what we call normal life. You know, normally when somebody says cross, um, the first picture it gives to you is a sad picture. You know, when we are talking about the crucified life, I will, you know, even the song we sang this morning, you know, the pastor made reference to yesterday, the old raw gate cross. You understand? You know, it's just something that can make your heart break. It's something that can make your heart sing. So the impression or the picture that a normal person has concerning the cross is that they want to deal with my life. You know, but... Um, the cross is actually God's intervention, you know, to cross out what you call your life that is not really your life, wow. you know. So you see that thing we call our life is a counterfeit life that we have embraced. Uh, it's a life that evil spirits sold to man. Wow. So the cross is God's way of actually crossing out that life to institute his own life, you know, which only has a future and that future is life everlasting Hallelujah. so when we see the cross wow. it's a symbol you know sometimes when they say the cross people don't understand the love that is behind it the love that is behind it is that you can actually live for something more than what you are currently living for mm. you know so it's god's intervention god's way of living that crosses out the way we have married as our life sure you understand so that we can begin to truly live like reverend ken explained to us this morning so in other words, our definition of normal is actually not normal. It's not normal. I hope that sings. I hope that sings. I mean, there are many things that we think they are normal. There, there are a lot, there are lots of things, lots of decisions we make, you know, the way we live our lives, that we just say, this is a normal thing for me to do. But what Pastor is saying now is helping us to see that our definition of normalcy, what normal means to us is actually not normal. And we are grateful to God that God is bring, opening that up to us. So that we all live here not the same way. We're not going to live here the same way. We're not going to live here with those definitions any longer. Praise God. Thank you so much, Pastor. That was... That, that was. Is it my time? I'm in my eyes. 1 p.m. Nana. <laughs> Don't worry, we're still here with you. Um, okay, so not to waste too much time, we'll be going back into our questions. Pastor, yeah. are you ready for us now? Yes. <laughs> okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, so our next question says, um, why is it so difficult to accept that someone else is better than I am? Then a follow-up question to that, how do I deal with the urge to always outdo others? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like these questions. They are very yes, practical. Very they practical. Are, they are very. As I've said the other time, that if you don't know what you are gaining, you know, you uh, if you don't um, if you don't know the value of what you are losing, mm. and know the value of what you are gaining, you won't have reasons to drop. Mm. Honestly, my sister, 
<laughs> there is a reality mm. that is real to us. Mm. I want to be the best. I want to be this one. I want to be that one. It's a reality amidst men. Yeah. It's a normal conversation mm. of natural men. Mm. In fact, if you meet your mom or your dad, say, I don't want to be the best. Mm. They can, they, will, they, they, will be, they will be frustrated. <laughs> yeah, they will say, what, right. else I, what have you been listening to nowadays? <laughs> yeah. Now, so it's a conversation that even we agree up to know. Mm. So you having the urge to do others is, nobody wants to be the last. Mm-hmm. In fact, some people even quote the scripture that we shall be the head on the table. Yeah, Praise God. I and then um, uh, good success and everything. Mm. And your success is measured by the failure of your brother or your sister. Uh-uh. Praise God. I was talking to somebody mm. yesterday. Um, the person was, uh, I, I hope the person, I know the person will be listening to me. <laughs> and uh, I asked her how much is she earning. She told me, I said, wow. I said, that is a lot of money. She said, ah, that's a small. I said, the reason why it is small is because so you have competition mm. in your heart. If the least paid friend of yours mm. is 50000 and I am collecting 200000 you yeah, feel fulfilled yeah. that you are earning a lot. Mm. Yeah. But you heard that some of your friends are earning like 800, 900, 1 million. So the little 200,000 you're earning, or maybe 300,000 you're earning, is too small. Mm. So that, thereby you can see the way, even in our conversation, in, in uh, things that, um, um, uh, in the things of our affairs, the affairs of life, mm. how those things creep in. Mm. You don't want anybody to okay. interpret things more than you. <laughs> you don't want everybody, uh, one day the Lord to ask me, must we be you always? Because we all face that same challenge. Most be you always. We, we all that, are you the only one that needs to be happy? Don't you think other people also to be, need to be happy? So it's a natural life. So it is a step into the realm of the spirit for you to gain grace to know that others are better than you. You have not lost. So you want to say something? Yeah, I wanted to ask a follow-up question. Okay. So now, because you mentioned that it's common with man, mm-hmm. and you know, it's now if you are going to now not um, try to outdo your brother or your mm-hmm. sister, it's going to require an effort. So how do you navigate that? It has to be conscious effort. Number one, you have to know that whatsoever you are doing mm-hmm. to outdo your brother is nothing. Mm-hmm. Is nothing. What did I say? Mm-hmm. It's nothing. Mm-hmm. To be the best graduate student. In your department is nothing. To be the first person to do this one is nothing. To be the best preacher amidst the preach is nothing. There is nothing here. I can tell you, I think you know, at times there are some that have, something that happened to you. They say, Wow, that was a powerful presentation. That was, wow. Ah, it's not like Sister Peju that was dragging the whole matter yesterday. You are so apt. Have you, do you read mass communication? Are you, do you study mass communication? Were you trained? And then that in hype you, hype you, hype you, hype you, hype you. And I say you are coming on the show next time. You want to also do better than you. So you go do research on. This is Christian show. Do your best and leave the rest for God. You understand? You are not going to act smart or outdo anybody. Just be yourself. Be, I want mean, to be yourself, be, be, be okay with mm. where, wherever you are, mm. and don't struggle to be anything. Mm. So now, the urge to outdo other is still flesh, mm. and that is the essence of the crucified life. Mm. The crucified life reveals to you that the life you are holding is a dung. Wow. It's a dung. Honestly, there is nothing here. Mm. There is nothing here. What well, is my sister? Yeah, there is nothing, nothing there. There is nothing there. What is here is scrap. Mm-hmm. Everything is scrap. Let me would the, the most holy thing that anybody can accord to you is that you are the best preacher. There is nothing here. You are the most popular pastor. There is nothing here. You are the one that has the, the highest follower. There is nothing here. Now that's why I'm doing IG Live now. Some people may be tempted, ah, let me check no more people are, that are following. Ah, 250 are following me. Me, Pastor Liki came, it was 1,000 people. They could see come back. Yes, if it sir. is 50 people that follow now, because they could come back. Yes, sir. There is nothing there. Oh. I'm not trying to outdo anybody. I just came to serve God. I will, I, when I finish, I go and enjoy myself at home and I will eat and drink. Yes, no sorrow. Mm. Now, the, I, the reason why there is no sorrow there is because I know that there is nothing here. Yeah. The Lord told me that, can you remember the best preacher in 1954? Mm. You can't remember it again. Can, can. Can, they have, can you remember the, the person that had the largest congregation in, 19, in 1999? You don't know. And we don't, so our histories will be erased. Mm. In moment of time, within I think of my life, with only that we are forgotten you. Yes, sir. Are you getting me? So just know that whatsoever thing you are doing, you are knowing. Don't do anything to impress anybody. 
there is nothing here. But you see, it is now something in the realm of the spirit to now allow your brother to be better than you. As in, I'm not trying to say, you are better than me and you are struggling. You are better than me, uh, <laughs> the way you are even behaving. You don't know that I'm preferring you. You are becoming proud of me. I will show that. I, no, no, no. <laughs> it's, not, it's not struggle. There is nothing here. There is nothing here. There is a reality beyond here. There is a reality beyond here. See, sorrow will fill your heart. Heartache will fill your heart. You will stress yourself beyond stress limit. Yourself, okay. You will enjoy yourself. You will enjoy the brotherhood. You will enjoy wow. faith. You enjoy love if you try to outdo other person because the ground where you are standing is a ground where everybody ought to be dying every day. There is nothing here. For, for me to prefer my brother to be better than me, hmm, it is a sign that I am learning Christ. I am telling you. Let's go to Philippians chapter, Philippians chapter 2. I hope I'm not, uh, I'm not out of order. Thank you very much, man. Thank you, man. Hallelujah. Amen. Philippians chapter 2. Let's go to Philippians chapter 2. I, some of these questions I was thinking they are simple, simple questions, mm. but as I sit down here, I know that the grace of God over our daddy is with us. I see that they are very, very, they are very, very important. Philippians chapter 2. I will just read through it. Um, if there be any consolation in, in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowel of mercies, these are the things that competition mm. of not allowing to, to see another topic better than these are the things it will injure. Mm. It will injure fellowship. It will injure comfort of love. It will injure bowels of mercy, bowels and mercies. It will injure it. Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let not be the, nothing be done. Uh, through what? So strife or vain glory. But in loneliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of other. Look to it that you make the other person happy. You know, one of the persons that really blessed me much more eh, uh, is um, that I know that the Lord has dealt with that I am very close to, who happened to be my, my brother and my friend, is Pastor Tokwe. I can, I'm so, um, um, I'm in love with him, not just because he's the best interpreter, but I see him practice this thing very, very well. Praise God. Amen. Like the present to the school I'm taking, like he's the one that's supposed to take it. And I have so much uh, blessing, there's so much, but he's not move. He's not move. He's not, he's, ah, wow, skill. He kept on saying, that is fellowship. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Now, there is nothing there. There's the, the, what is there that people are blessed and my soul is saved. So let us look at it. Let this might be in you. So it's a mind. What I want to say to prefer other better than you is not, it's a mind. It's a mindset. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a working of the Lord. It's a working of the Lord. So let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So that means the, if the mind is not there, you can't do it. Because it is our food. It is our life. We, are, we crave for ah, wow. If they say you are looking so beautiful, beautiful, the most beautiful guy, what's the same most beautiful guy of, the, of your clique? That means they have put comparison. Are you getting You feel happy. You feel happy. Ah, the, the wee one is, uh, is from Jamaica. This is from Jamaica. And that is how people keep on pursuing vanity to make sure that they, they impress other in the name of I am better than you. Is is the thing is thinking. Is what is thinking. Is 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 a is a is 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 strange mm-hmm. in the realm of the spirit. You know, somebody I, I was discussing one of my 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 uh, parents in the law said ah there are some people they can't wear that the lace they wear for parties one million naira, some five hundred thousand per yard. I say ah, ah. and by the time they enter that party. <clears throat> They now see somebody that's wearing two million per day, and they say, and she told me that they only wear that lace once, 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 once they wear it once, we won't see them again. I said, so what kind of car they will be driving? I said, ah, maybe 10 million car, 10 million car. Mm-hmm. See, it's 100 million, millions of naira, hundreds of millions. I said, ah, I can't maintain that kind of life. Mm-hmm. So you can see the way people are into competition. You see Bonaboy, Davido, Whiskey, the way they are competing for stage, 
the best Africa this, Africa record labor, and the same thing is a nature. You see it in them, but you never know that it's embedded in yes. us too. Wow. So it's strange. You know when you see Bonaboy is trying to do the video, the video is trying to have whiskey, mm -hmm. whiskey is begging everybody to follow you. Well, you are no sense, take out no sense. It's a life of death. It's because we don't see it, we don't, we still celebrate it. We still we are still we are still conscious of the praise of men. Mm -hmm. Not the honor that comes from God. You know, God honors you more when you prefer your brother. Mm -hmm. See, my brother is better than me. And you are not saying it in the name of, ah, you know, in our community now, if you say you are better than your brother, you will be crucified, though, you are better than me. <laughs> yes, or, are you better than me? You are better than me. Better yes. Than me. You are better than me. You are better than me. You are not, I'm just saying it from sincerity of heart, with joy, not with pain. You <laughs> say, <laughs> <laughs> You are better than me, oh. I am nobody, oh. You are still sorrowful with it. <laughs> oh, you are happy. Mm. Wow. Pastor T.J. is doing well. Wow. Pastor T.J., we coordinate this thing better than when I was coming. I said, thank God, Pastor did not hand over this kind of project to me. <laughs> it's my faith. Mm. Because I can't, I don't even trust myself. <clears throat> so I see him doing it well. I don't have any, no point of, <laughs> there's no pain there because I know it's a cross. <laughs> Praise God. What am I trying to say? We should see life better than here. Yeah. There is a life beyond here. And when you prefer your brother, you will discover that you are better in the sight of the Lord. Yeah. So it's a mind. If you don't wear that mind, you can't do it. Mm. Because it is our food. Mm. You know the way people eat, eat um, popcorn? Mm. We put it on. That is the food of the soul. Oh no. Mm. I am better than you. Edge over the other person, your advantage. <laughs> Now, what the cross is, a, what cross have come to do is to remove those advantages and introduce what is to a life, to a crucified life. That crucified life is a life that will prefer the other person better. So the reason why you find it difficult is because the mind is not yet worked in you. And how it's going to be worked in you is that you have to stick to the word of the Lord. Observe me, observe me, observe me. Look at how people are doing things. Watch those who are ahead of you. Follow example of those who are teaching you. Also look at the scripture. How Paul, how Paul, the Lord, really dared to try to spend down all those things. In Romans chapter 12, verse 10. Let's look at Romans chapter 10, verse 12. And that will be the end of my contribution to this particular question. There's nothing here, obviously. There's nothing here. There's nothing. There's no inheritance here at all. There's nothing. He talked talk, 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 talk to the, he, he, he spoke to the Pharisees. He said, what to you? Because you seek the honor mm. that came from me. Mm. So the reason why you want to outdo your brother is because you are looking for honor mm. that came from me. Mm. And it's a very, it's a, it's a wretched life. Yes, it's a wretched life. Let's look at it. I hope I've not sounded too hard. Yes, Please. I'm, I'm, I'm not yet delivered from me too. I'm not yet delivered from me too. I'm, I'm, also, I'm also striving to, to excel more in it. Um, Romans chapter 12, verse 10, reads, Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love. In honor, referring one another. In honor. So when you, when you, this is a mind of Christ, the mind of Christ that wrote this epistle. They don't teach you in this one in school. You have to be the best graduate, you have to be the best this and best that, but you don't know that it's actually the, the death so in the church, how we live is actually exalting our brother better than us, without pain or regret, mm -hmm. without any sense of, ah, if I say, Pastor, 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 Topo is better than me now. The number of people that have been following me, they will move to Pastor Topo, and then I will not have a follower. What do you want to use follower for? <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you a social, social media influencer? What do you want to do? What do you want to eat sauce? Mm -hmm. uh, a, so just live, live. Mm -hmm. Let prefer your brother. Yeah. And be okay and be at peace. Mm -hmm. No cry, no weeping, no sorrow, no... No pain, mm -hmm. but with joy. Be kindly affectionate towards one another. Be, you know what you say? Somebody, somebody who is into competition will not be kind to his brother. Will not be affectionate. Will not, be, will not have mercy towards his brother. <laughs> how do you break down? He has broken down. He knows how to do work. He has all the time. He's the only one. Now he has malaria. Come and preach again now. Because of competition. <laughs> you understand? So that means even this nature can be make you wicked. Mm -mm. Can be make you wicked. Wow. Ah, thank God, his voice is gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sing, 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 sing. There's only one. Wow. Oh, you're only one. Well, if the voice is gone, mm -hmm. you know what Christ will do? 
Christ will intercede. Lord, heal that voice. We go and look for more water. Take one water. Take a bit of cola. Take honey. Take this. This verse will be good. This verse, this verse has been blessing us. Please don't do it again. Go and rest. Don't do anything. Don't worry. I'll help you. Take up everything. Just go and rest. That is Christ. That life is more honorable than trying to, uh, okay, I'm the one, I'm the, I'm the next person in line. Let me, no, you don't need that. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Thank you. This question. I mean, it, 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 it has sparked a lot of, of responses on our Instagram live. Uh, a lot so, of plugging. I think beating. So, um, so let's see what uh, okay, I'm saying. saying. Okay, someone, Ade Daya said, Kai, the nature can make me wicked. God, I yes. beg. <laughs> Here by me, they say, please be hard, sir. We like it at Korikwe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Danny 21 says, um, there is nothing here. Mm. Keeps ringing. Mm. There is nothing here. Mm. Yeah, so guys, keep your comments rolling in. Keep it rolling in. I think um, from this particular question, the um, one hard question in my, in my heart, you know, I'm asking mm. myself, that what which in which site am I living for? Is it yes. for man? Is it for God? So yes. it's a hard question we should yes. all ask ourselves when we want to when we want to do anything mm-hmm. really. Mm-hmm. Am I doing this for man? Yes. Or am I doing or this am I for living God? before the audience so, of one? Yes. yes. So Wow. No more. <laughs> I, so. I feel so bubble. We have to move on to the next <laughs> question. <laughs> so all right. Um okay, let's move on. Let's move on, guys. Praise on, praise on. Okay. Okay. The next question. Person is asking: Is it is it permissible to pray ahead of time about one's life and partner and marriage, or should one just wait until it's time? Okay. Okay. I think I can maybe buttress this particular question. Okay. Let me try to ask that. You know, there's there's this. How would I put it? Maybe for example, especially in this question, person is asking for marriage, and Mm -hmm. you know that the Lord has raised us and is still raising we young people to take no thoughts for our lives okay. in the aspect of marriage concerning this question. And maybe the person is asking, so um, since I'm not taking thoughts, let me focus on the Lord and everything. Mm-hmm. When it's time for marriage, the Lord will bring it ahead and I'll pray for it. Mm-hmm. So I think the person is asking, are we, is it that we should not pray at all? Because I feel like sometimes the Lord can actually spring it in your heart. Yeah. Pray, pray for marriage, pray. Not that you are taking thoughts. So the person is asking, <laughs> how will I now join the line? How, like, am I taking thoughts or I'm not taking thoughts? So I think that was better. Okay, if, uh, you know, where, where I'm coming from, somebody said that you pray for his, uh, um, I think it was uh, James, um, he said that the kind of prayer he has prayed for his wife to be, <laughs> not, that is enough for the Lord to answer. So he has prayed enough that he has prayed. Now, he's of the, you know, Pastor James Bonner is an old, he's an elder, so he's, he partook of the, of, the, of the former move of the Spirit, the Pentecostal move, where the, and of course, moving to the Word of Righteousness as an elderly minister, I just made a reference to that. Are you getting it? Yes, so in making reference to that, there is nothing wrong with you praying for a life partner. <laughs> First Peter chapter 5 verse, it says, casting all your cares. Is he a care? Hmm. Is he a care? So, no, you, you pray. You say desire, you pray. Of course, the Holy Ghost will steer you up, but I would rather have the Holy Ghost steer me up to, hmm. to pray for the kingdom to come. Hmm. <laughs> I'm telling you. The issue is that we think that God doesn't care. Hmm. Wow. We, we feel that until we pray, or it that is when it will come. I want to ask some question. How many prayer points was raised in Eden for Adam for his wife to appear? No. No. So that means God cares. You must have it in your mind that God cares. The hormones in your body that is calling for a partner, your everything that is making you to feel that you need to marry. Outside competition that I want to be to marry. Outside competition. But at times you have, you just want to, you just want a, comp- you just want somebody you want to be talking to. Are you getting me? You just want somebody you want to be talking to, somebody that you can say, ah, I was able to speak with uh, brother, brother Andrew, and then he gave me enough time, attention, um, he celebrated for birthday. God knows that you have emotional need. You know that you have, you have need of support in your system. You know you are not perfect. And even the desire to marry, 
is God that put it there. You could have created other like stone or tree. <laughs> somebody, <coughs> somebody that they could make reference to somebody. <laughs> the, the condition has filled, has finished the person. Says he told this guy, "See, this God that is going is better than me." <laughs> he said, "I wish I'm goat. <laughs> I don't have any care." But God did not create us as good. He did create us as stone. He created us as human beings. And one of the nature that God put from the beginning is that he put the program of marriage in us. And so God is the one that put it there. The same way the Lord who, who created the mouth, we really feel it with food that we feel it. Are you getting me? So I just want to, um, um, I don't know why I'm going this direction. I hope I'm not sounding hard. Okay? Uh, I can feel your, I can feel the, 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 the needs and they are real. Um, feeling that way, most of the time, you are not carnal. Mm. You are just being human. Mm. See, you understand? You are just being human. And the praying about it is not everything. Casting all your cares. We cares for you. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. It says, Let's look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. I am building a foundation for the answer. Mm-hmm. And I really want to, I want you to know that. And God is so heartless. And we are not also heartless. We pastors are not heartless. I understand. We know there is a need in the heart. Praise God. But we have to look at this thing. Philippians chapter 4. It was Pastor TJ that said it. Is it a care? Pray about it. It won't cost you anything. But pray about it. Everything. Look at it. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Be careful for nothing. For in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let what your request be made known unto God. So you have requests. Is it a prayer request? Talk to God about it. It is better you talk to God about it than to, than to, not, to not slip into, into depression. It is better you talk to God about it before, you cannot, uh, before Satan will move you to condemnation. When you pray to God about it, there is an assurance of God's love. There's an assurance of God's comfort. There's an assurance of God's will being fulfilled in your life. And I can tell you, if you can pray, if you can pray, you will you receive a comforting answer from the Lord. But another flip side to it is that if only you can also register in your heart that God cares, you don't need to do much prayer about it. You don't need to. If, if my children are in school now, they will soon come back. They don't think of what they will eat. It is my, it is my worry. It is the adult think for them. It's my responsibility to think ahead. Of, oh, these children are coming back. They should eat. Okay, they are school fees. It's not their worry. They don't even know. That is how it's supposed to be. But of course, there are some realities that also pull us to say, no, think of it. Pressure from home and everything. If the prayer is too much, pray about it and talk to God about it. And I can tell you that the answer will be very comforting. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Pastor Ayo. Um, <laughs> okay, so our time is fast spent, so we'll just go right into our next question. Uh, the last question. Yeah, the last question. Okay. So it says, um, are there any limits or boundaries to exercising faith in God's word? So this person has a peculiar case. It says, I have been a stammerer since birth, and I have lost several opportunities because of this. Can I trust God for this to stop? Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. You will not believe that I was once a stammerer. Wow. <laughs> I used to be like this. Wow. Wow. And I will be shaking because I want to talk about this. The word is not coming out. Yeah. Anything can change. Wow. Wow. With God, all things I'm are possible. possible. With God, all things. There is no boundary. Hmm. As long as it's in the world, hmm. you can change your situation. Hmm. Stammering is nothing before God. It's nothing before God. It's a deformity of the of the of the of the speech of the speech um, facilities in the body. But it can be it can be cured. Just when you are just 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 stay on the word of God. Mark eleven twenty three said that um, whatever I say to this mountain, without remove, without casting the sea. Eh? So you can yeah, you shall not doubt in your heart, but believe that what things ever you say, you have it and you shall have it. So I can tell you, family is nothing before God. No disease, no sickness, no deformity is anything before God. 
But let me give you this advice. <clears throat> Work on your anger level. One of the reasons why some people stammer is because of anger. Wow. Number two, work on your... Don't be under pressure. Don't speak under pressure. When you're under pressure, don't talk. Mm-hmm. When you don't talk under pressure, you are calm. You so that when you are calm, mm-hmm. you won't stammer. Mm-hmm. Stammering reduces mm-hmm. when you are calm. calm. But when you are mm-hmm. tensed mm-hmm. up, mm-hmm. agitated, mm-hmm. Uh, and all you are... You, are under, you know, as you are looking at me now, you are expecting something to flow out. Yeah. I can come under pressure. Mm-hmm. And then I want to, uh, and I start shaking my mouth. Just calm down, relax. Yeah. Anytime you are angry, just relax and say, thank you, Jesus. Mm-hmm. I'm not a stammerer. Mm-hmm. I'm healed of this. Mm-hmm. I'm healed. I thank you because I'm not a stammerer. Mm-hmm. Just keep on confessing God. God will believe God. Anytime it's coming, anytime you want to stammer, just shut it down. Mm-hmm. Say, thank you, Jesus. I receive help. I'm not going to stammer in Jesus' name. Just move on. If you stammer, just tell yourself again, I'm not going to stammer. As you keep on confessing God's word, God's word, mm. it will disappear wow. unto the glory of God. And then don't complain. Keep giving thanks. Mm. At least your mouth, you are not, de- you are not dumb. Yes, you are not dumb. You can still talk. So give, give thanks to God. Mm. And I can tell you that your healing is, is sure. Yes, it's sure. Mm. You are healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Asaya, thank you so much. Thank you. thank you so much. I just need to know that whatever we are going through, mm. body wise, soul wise, the Lord is, mindful. Lord is my very mindful. Yes. Lord, is, Lord wants to heal us. Yes. Yes. Yes, if, yes, yes, yes. Mm. <clears throat> like if, if you are going for, like maybe it's the, the person that has lost many opportunity in life, because of it, if you are going for a job interview, just tell yourself, the people seated, they are human beings. They don't have two heads. The God in me and the God I'm serving is greater than them. This job is mine. And if it is not the will of God, I will get another one. Every opportunity before me is a great, is going to lead to testimony. Prepare yourself. Read what you're supposed to read. And the little you can read, read it. The little you cannot read, don't bother yourself. When you get there, be yourself. Be yourself. Look at them eyeball to eyeball. They are human beings like you. Thank you, sir. I'm happy to be here. I learned you at the, I thank you for inviting me. I just, what is this? What is Ah, Oga. I actually read it, but I forgot it. I forgot it. Just be yourself. <laughs> just be yourself. Ah, Oga. Ah, thank you so much. Ah, or just use idea. Most of the questions, they are not, they, are not, uh, they don't want straight answer. They just want to, they just want your idea on it. I don't be under tension. Just relax. Anything that we, you will eat, everything you will eat, God has provided it. Your clothes, the house you will stay, the job you will take, is, so do it by faith. So, any, anywhere you are, just feel free. Be free. Feel free. Don't be under pressure to speak. Don't be under pressure to deliver. Don't be under tension. And tell yourself, the person I'm going to meet is human being like me. Thank you, sir, for respectfully, in honor, but maintain eye contact. Maintain eye contact. Thank you. When they ask questions, relax. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. You understand? Thank you, sir. Thank you. You are still thinking of the question. Thank you. Thank you. And they are expecting questions. Just be looking at them. Thank you. Yeah. The question you ask is, uh, I start. Just start. You understand? Just relax. You understand? There is nothing. There is something that is coming from, from on high that, that that is too much for the ground. And cocaine, uh, and it will be so hard that the, yes, the, 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 the ground will cry. No, nothing is hard for the ground to receive. So nothing should be. Just relax. And calm down and ask her the little you can answer. The one you can answer, tell them that you get back to them. Or just use wisdom to play around it. And then just the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Thank you so much, Pastor Ewa. It's been a time of great refreshing. Yeah, I've been so refreshing. blessed. <laughs> yes. So, um, in case you joined in late, as always, we would rebroadcast this um, episode, this edition on Monday on YouTube, 8 p.m. So, 
listen twice if you joined from the beginning. If you joined in late, you have the opportunity to listen again on Monday. Yes, so. The next IG Live series continues on Friday. I hope mm -hmm. to see you there. I hope you tune in. I hope you invite your friends and uh, your loved ones to Yes, them. and come with your comments mm -hmm. next week, too. Yes, so. Yes, so. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank, thank you very much. Yes, thank Do you, you want to much. pray for us before you go, sir? Okay, thank you very much. <coughs> Eternal Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. You are our Father. You care. You are a loving Father. You never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you. Lord, I pray for everyone who, has, who will listen to this message or who has listened. I ask you, Jesus, everything, every need of your soul will be made to Jesus. Amen. This thing we have spoken today, let it bring help to their hearts. Amen. Let it aid their work in the spirit. Amen. Strengthen their hearts. Amen. Strengthen their mind to follow Amen. you. Strengthen their heart to love you. Amen. Lord, I am praying specifically for all my brothers and my sisters that Lord, the life of the New Testament, Amen. the crucified life, Amen. will be made known unto every soul. Amen. Lord, we don't want, we don't just want to hold this thing as in, like an activity, mm -hmm. but let it be an experience. Amen. Oh Lord, let there be a revelation of a better life. Amen. Let there be a revelation of a better hope. Amen. Lord, our grip on the natural, Lord, will begin to be losing up. We want to lose our grip on the natural and we lay hold on that which is real. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray for that, my brother, who stammers. You are healed in the name of Amen. our Lord Jesus Christ. And everyone that has ailments in their body, I declare you are healed in the name of Amen. our Lord Jesus Christ. Every sickness or disease in your body that has refused any all kinds of solution, today I come against in the name of our Lord Amen. Jesus Christ. I say you are healed in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We strengthen our, our ankles. We will strengthen them. We will strengthen them. Our presenters will strengthen them. And you cause them to increase in grace. Amen. You bless the media team. Amen. And your name shall be glorified. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so Thank much, Papa. So blessed to have you again. Thank you so much. So, guys, see you. Thank you for staying through to the end. Thank you so much. See you guys next week. Bye bye.